Bruges seemingly has it all. Chocolate, beer, canals, waffles and windmills. Yet despite this, it took the combined effort of Colin Farrell, Voldemort and Mad-Eye Moody to really sell people on being in Bruges. If this city's never been on your radar, hopefully this video will convince you otherwise of what is a perfect long weekend location. After spending 48 hours here, I've compiled this list of things you definitely need to check out, some cannot miss cafes we discovered, and an assortment of tips along the way. If you're new here, we make travel movies from around the world, hoping you might just find your next holiday inspiration. So join our growing monkey troop and see where we might take you next. This is Suitcase Monkey, eating more chocolate than is medically advised. So let's start then with one of Belgium's finest exports. Bruges is a chocolate lover's paradise and every second shop is like a Willy Wonka adventure. Some being more literal than others. <gasps> These five chocolatiers regularly come top of the list, so make sure you check those out first. Although do stick around until the end of this video to see the best hot chocolate experience I've ever had. I also wanted to point out this sign here. This indicates the shop is a member of the Bruges Chocolate Guild, meaning the chocolates are both handmade and are a local speciality. As with most historical cities, the best way to really understand its history is through a walking tour. There are many different operators available, but we took the Legends of Bruges tour, which was excellent. Bruges is the largest city in the province of West Flanders, which is located in the Flemish region of Belgium. Receiving city status in the 12th century, it was an important trading hub during the Middle Ages. It is a fairly compact city, so admiring its architecture on foot can keep you entertained for hours. The guide was also a great way to discover places we might have otherwise missed. One was the whole area around Mini Water, or the Lake of Love as it's known. It's a picturesque, peaceful spot which is well worth a visit. You can reserve your free walking tour space online, which I'll link to below. You cannot come to this city and not see the Belfry of Bruges. As in, like, literally, it's everywhere, you, you can't not see it. Standing 83 meters tall, it once acted as a watchtower, with its 47 bells alerting people to danger, announcements, and of course, the time. Although it's not for the faint of heart, I'd recommend climbing the 366 steps for the best views of the city. Be aware though, wait times can venture upwards of 30 to 60 minutes, especially around midday when full capacity is often reached. There are a number of squares in Bruges where the cobbled streets open themselves up and make for a popular stop. The number one is without doubt the Market Square, which sits in front of the Belfry. Along with impressive views of the bell tower itself, lies one of the more iconic images within Bruges. It's the busiest area in town, so is alive with a heap of activity. Only a few minutes away is Berg Square, which is actually one of the earliest places of settlement here. It's been a popular hub since the second century and its town hall is incredibly impressive. Beer literally flows through the streets of Bruges as it moves through pipes that run beneath its cobbled streets. Beer is a massive export for Belgium and for some is reason enough to visit here alone. Now, we are by no means beer connoisseurs, so keeping that in mind, I suggest checking out the beer wall at 2B. This is a popular bar that offers an assortment of beer through its sample menus. They all come with nibbles, with each menu explaining the flavours. This gave us laymans a great selection to enjoy. It also demonstrates really well why I shouldn't speak to camera to review complex flavours. Tastes like lilt. 
Mm. It's very fruity. Tastes like beer. <laughs> I can confirm it is beer. The bar exterior is surrounded by canals, so even for us, this was all well worth it. There are also numerous beer experiences, such as the Half Man Brewery, for those wanting to go a little further. Next up are the markets. If you visit around winter, there are a number of Christmas activities from late November to early January. We booked early December for this very reason, as nothing gets us in the festive mood like an overload of this. Throughout the year, however, every Wednesday hosts a food and flowers market in Market Square. A couple of tips I wanted to give in terms of finding a hotel. Since we arrived by train, we found it best to book somewhere on the southwest side. Since this is the closest to the station, it meant our hotel was only a 15 minute walk away, instead of staying somewhere more to the north, doubling the walk there and back. We found this affordable, clean, quiet hotel that was only a 9 minute walk from the Belfry. I've linked our hotel in the description below if you're interested to book. I also think it's best not to have breakfast included where possible, since there are so many different cafes around. Just a few minutes from our hotel was this really nice bakery that was perfect for an early morning snack. A popular way of seeing the city with minimal effort is by taking either a boat along the canal or a horse-drawn carriage, both lasting 30 minutes. The horses start from Market Square and cost 50 euros in total, with a maximum of five people sharing the cost. Boats depart from five different locations around the city and offer some unique perspectives that can't be seen otherwise. Because we had two full days here, we had enough time to walk the eastern outskirts. Here we found four majestic windmills, some dating back over 200 years. These are the last windmills standing from a peak of 23 back in the 16th century and were used for corn, oil and flour. They are all lined up along the canal and the journey makes for a nicer change of pace away from the busy streets. Getting here from London is really easy as you can book a return through Eurostar. With this you are actually buying a timed ticket to Brussels Midi Station then making a simple change to hop on a local train to Bruges. This local leg can be used any time within 24 hours, meaning you could spend some extra time in Brussels before moving on. The journey onwards to Bruges takes around 50 minutes. It's relatively easy to find return trips around £100, it's more comfortable than flying and they often have deals, so do keep an eye out. Probably my favourite thing we did in Bruges was visiting the old chocolate house. Now this place is super busy and we had to come back a few times in order to get in, but it was definitely worth the return trip. Seated in a quaint tea room, we were first served one big giant bowl of hot milk. Accompanying this is one of 12 different types of chocolate, served in a cup, also edible since it's made from chocolate. This allows you to find your own preference for the perfect blend of chocolate to milk ratio. This was excellent. Oh, it's already nice. Along with this, we ordered an assortment of cupcakes and mini desserts to round off our sweet tooth overload. And quickly, while we're on the subject, I want to highlight this hot and savoury cafe that we stumbled on simply called soup. It specialises in creamy hot soup and was an excellent way to warm up in December. As mentioned at the start, we make travel movies from around the world, hoping you might just find your next holiday inspiration. So if you've come this far and you haven't yet subscribed, join our growing monkey troop to find where we might take you next. Please drop this video a like since it really helps us and follow us to keep in touch. Thanks for watching Suitcase Monkey.